Good day and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a very special guest that's here with us today and he's done a multitude of things in the music industry from opera, so I'm finding out on our commercial break, <laughs> as well as the technology with the internet, entertainment, radio, and a host of things. So my advice to all of our viewers that are out there that are listening and watching us now is to call all your friends and let them know that John Nance Jr. is here. I have the one and only John T. Nance Jr., the owner of John Nance Entertainment. How are you, John? Fine, Denise. How are you? Great, great. Good, good to have good, you here good, today. Good, good to be back. Good to be back. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> Why don't you share with us some of the things that have been happening uh, with the business since the last time you were here? Oh, uh, well, you know, we've just been going crazy. Uh, we've done so far seven cruises with Carnival Cruise Lines, all of them very successful. Uh, we're going to Jamaica in December of this year. Um, we have over 220 reservations already, you know, deposited. Uh, I mean, we've done small segments, you know, here and there. Right. And so Carnival feels that we're just ripe for the picking to go ahead and, and just fill the whole ship up. And hopefully we'll come and talk with you guys and get you on board. And it'll be one great big show for five days. Oh, that would be a beautiful something, <laughs> a very beautiful something. Um, what about the um, the music biz? What's happening with you? Because we know you do the events and the festivals and things of that nature. I started getting my exposure to professional entertainment as a child, actually. I played in, in kid kitty bands up until I was 15. When I was 15, then I went straight to the nightclub circuit and actually, uh, you know, it's still involved in on a limited basis entertainment from a musician standpoint. I uh, got into being a disc jockey when the disco era came in right. uh, because I was, we, I created a, a situation where we put music on reel to reel tapes during the breaks of uh, the group and we would play the tapes and people would still be dancing. You know, the music was flowing <laughs> so good. We take a break, they'd be dancing, we come back, we just pick up our instruments and take on. So. Uh, I started getting calls uh, for my DJ services real heavy about 1976 and that's when disco came in and disco right. was taking over and actually a friend of mine who is also no longer here named Dave Lavelle, we put together a neon box, it was a 4x4 four four neon box with four tubes of neon in it and it had a controller and we plugged it in and it was like all the lights you needed in the room. And it was prototyped off of a system that we had put in at the Happy Medium down in Rush Street. So, uh, and in 1976, I was the only person traveling around with a portable system with a neon light show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm into linear music. Circular music, you end up playing the same thing over and over again, and you're programming it in. But my whole thing, and this is what I, I rant about, because I rant is that back in the day when we were coming up, uh, we used to all crowd around the radio because at eight o'clock, they were gonna play the new Supremes records or the new Temptations record, and, or they were gonna play some obscure group like uh, Big Boy by the Jackson Five out of Gary, Indiana, and nobody knew who they were, but they were a pick, they picked a hit. The program directors would come in, they say, look, this is gonna be a hit, we're gonna play it for you, and then you, you know you call in. But nowadays, they wanna play it safe. Like, for instance, K. John's song, uh, The Ocean, which is a big hit, was around for almost a year and a half, two years before it even hit the radio. What's up with that? These program directors are not doing the job of actually being the genies and gurus and the, and the, and the people who see the hits and pit the hits that we used to do. They are just doing what they're told. This, this is why I was speaking to stepping outside of their box. Mm -hmm. It's time to create new games that we actually fit because the games and things that are structured now with the radio, and I mean, that's with every industry, mm -hmm. right down to agriculture. Mm -hmm. It was not structured for people of the darker hue. And when I say structured, I'm talking about whereas we can thrive and be successful in those things, just like with what you're describing. You have all these great artists that are out here, and how often do you actually hear the sound? The thing that really hurts a lot, and that I, I, I'm real big on, is that, you know, the, the, the bootleggers are killing the industry as well. Um, they're, 
but for two reasons. Number one, the, the artists are not getting the revenue from the records that they produce, so they can't afford to go back in the studio, number one. But then secondly, they're blank CDs and you don't know who, you can have a favorite song and people say, what's that song again? Uh, I, it goes like this and then they get some bad version, you can't even tell. So when the artists appear somewhere, they don't even buy tickets to support the live performance. Well, this is why I'm saying, don't you think that it's time to do something different? That's why we are making this movement happen because one of the main things that I want to do with who I call my bootleg stars, my Marvin Jr. Jr., my Marzette Griffin, my Keys, this, this boy Keys out of Atlanta had a song, Me and Mrs. Jones, that was on every bootleg CD. All these people had songs on every bootleg CD, this side of the doggone Pacific. Their songs are standards, people are dancing on them and everything else, and he had no distribution. He got not a dime because he didn't have any fulfillment. The fulfillment part is where you get it in the stores, you get it on the iTunes, you get it in all these different things. You get a label, the tracking, you get it on the air. And you know, his song could even break on the radio next year and it'll be three or four years old. Right, and that's been the consensus. Michael Jackson, what new albums did he do after Thriller? Maybe he did a couple, two or three, but once he got to be 30 years old, once you get to be 30 years old, you are basically, if you don't have a hit, if you don't have history, and you got a 30 year old recording star, you can forget about it because they're all trying to gear towards the kids when people don't even realize that in this whole stepping market, these people are spending $100 for alligator shoes. They're drinking uh, Cavassier and Hennessy Black. I mean, they're drinking the, the Martel. They're drinking the Top Shelf. They're spending the money and, and buying the clothes. Lord have mercy. I can't even afford the clothes because I can't find them big enough. <laughs> they spend the money. They do the, the cruises. They, they're doing the events. They dress up. You have two, a couple may have $1,000 worth of clothes on going to a steppers affair, which is all over the country and now going all over the world. You, know, you do your work, you do your work, you stay focused on your work, and then you let your actions take you to whatever next steps you're going in. This is entertainment. You know, it's, it's not slavery. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. true. and even in slavery, they had entertainment because you have to entertain yourself for diversion. We put a lot of prep work into what we do in terms of making sure that when they come out, it's not the show up and play whatever you want type thing. It's like, okay, I'm going to be here. What am I, you know, what am I going to do? And then you anticipate just in case you're totally wrong. So I always tell people, I'm always way over prepared, way over prepared. But if we see that distribution is part of that void, there's the resolution. Well, we're moving. I mean, by the mere fact that I'm in this new facility, beautiful facility that you guys have here, that's totally impressive. We're, we are, we're talking, but we're doing. We are reaching the people every day in all different kinds of ways. This is not an emotional thing for me. The things that I do are very actual, and I have to have numbers to support my theories. I want to know, what does the number say? When I do a mailing, yes. my average return on my email blast, which I do every four to six weeks because I don't want to spam people, and it's more like a newsletter than it is like a solicitation. People don't want to be solicited. What they want to do is they want to be involved, so you have to engage them and, and let them know that you as an individual are important to me. Everybody in my life that I come across, either virtually, actually, or in any way, is important to me. It matters. It matters. It matters. I can't say it enough times. Because without the support of the people that are out there, we would be nobody. You'd be the greatest thing in the world. Nobody's watching your channel or listening to you. You are one person tripping, okay? <laughs> but if you're out there among a lot of people and you're getting the support, you are a team or you are a force flowing and you are forced to be reckoned with. This and that's what we need to, we need to do, continue to do more of what we're doing. We need to continue to promote each other. We need to continue to support each other. We need to keep it moving because 
you know, I, I'm real happy because I'm with movers. Yeah, movers that's, and, you that's know, a good thing. And we're about to start becoming shakers. <laughs>